Hi everyone, I'm Wanda Martin, fashion and portrait photographer and Canon ambassador. And in this video today, in about the next half an hour, I'll be telling you a little bit about myself, my work, my background, where I'm coming from, what inspires me. I'll be sharing some tricks and tips, and also I'll show you some of my fashion editorial work, some of my portraiture, and some of my personal conceptual projects. So please stay with me, let's get started. So originally, I'm from the countryside of Hungary. I'm coming from a small town, from a family of artists. My father is a photographer and it's funny because even though he never wanted me to be one and he never wanted me to follow in his footsteps, it was still him who bought me my first camera. I remember it was a 20D at the time. And um, I was a very shy um, teenager and obviously lacking the confidence to ask other people to model for me because even already back then I was interested in people and portraiture um, I started taking pictures of myself so basically I started getting familiar with the medium of photography via self-portraits and shortly after taking self-portraits uh, and you know we are talking about the early days of social media so I posted some of my self-portraits on, on social media so some teenage girls from my hometown started asking me to take portraits of them and pictures of them so I guess these were my first um, commissions at age 17. I moved to Budapest to the capital at age 18 and I studied history and theory of cinema and shortly after I started studying fine art and conceptual photography at the University of Arts and Design Budapest and from there I got the chance to come to London for three months it was a scholarship at London College of Fashion and you know it just gave me a taste of life in the UK I realized three months is basically nothing it's just basically enough for you to start making new friends for you to start speaking the language so I decided I had to come back and settle in London. So I applied for a master course in fashion photography at the London College of Fashion. I got accepted. So that was a time about exactly six years ago now when I moved to England. Now some words about how I got involved with fashion and how I started doing fashion photography. So from the very beginning on, it was quite obvious for me that I was interested in people and portraiture and about age 18 I bought a camera 5D Mark II that I was using actually for 8 years or more and moving to Budapest, my first flatmate was a fashion designer student at the time and I looked at my camera and was like, oh, I'm sure it can take like good quality pictures, right? So do you want to... Do you mind taking some pictures of my final master collection? So this is how it all started. I took some pictures for him of his clothes and after that more and more commissions from designers, young designers, imagining designers and uh, more established brands as well started pouring in and I found myself working for magazines pretty early on and uh, some of Hungary's rock and roll bands and musicians. Obviously moving to London meant sort of a restart which was obviously very exciting and very frustrating in a way because first you barely speak the language, you don't know anyone, you don't have friends. Um, I was studying at a master course for two years but obviously London is one of the most expensive cities so I had to work simultaneously so I had to work during the whole time and I was working um, on my fashion editorials, I was working on a new portfolio, I met new stylists, I, I tried to find a new team for myself and shortly after I found myself working for, for magazines and in a few years time um, some of my clients included Vogue, Numero, ID, Wonderland magazine and I worked for brands such as Marc Jacobs, Dior, Louis Vuitton, Burberry or companies such as Matches Fashion or net a and uh, I started working for more and more musicians and record labels such as Sony Music or Atlantic Records. A lot of people ask me how would you describe your visual style, your aesthetic in a few words? I think is the combination of romantic painterly beauty and uh, rock and roll attitude. So the combination of historic references and modern styles. I think for me, moving to London 
seemed like an obvious choice. I've always been fascinated by England, London. I, I always loved the 19th century romantic literature, for example, of the Bronte sisters, Wuthering Heights, Yorkshire, all that. I'm especially fascinated by the avant-garde attitude of the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood of the late 1840s and the visual characteristics of the likewise rebel at the time 20th century subcultures like rock and roll or punk. There is something truly, originally romantic about the rock and roll attitude. So I think my work is like a collage of these two. My favorite 19th century romantic books, the pre-Raphaelites and the long-haired, melancholic rock and roll boys are merging into one in my head. And this is how they are creating the essence of my visual world. They were all outsiders, turning their backs on their reality and establishing a new system of values for their era. You know, probably it all started subconsciously, I just put everything together, I found inspiring and exciting, and obviously later, after me realizing it, it became a deliberate approach. So the same things interest me in both my fashion photography and my personal work. So my whole body of work is about the same things, about youth cultures, subcultures, about, about rock and roll, about gender, about love, sexuality, the duality of belonging somewhere versus opposing. So basically I'm very much interested in love stories and outsiders as well. It's interesting because when I was doing my master fashion photography course at the London College of Fashion, my course leader was, wasn't a fashion photographer, he was a performance artist and he approached fashion photography in a very conceptual way. A lot of people think fashion and fashion photography is about taking beautiful pictures of beautiful people in beautiful clothes and beautiful environment, but I do believe fashion has a different role and fashion does have a responsibility and the fashion industry does have a responsibility to talk about relevant issues as well since um, it can reach a wider audience or a different audience than an art photography. When I'm shooting portraits and I'm doing portraiture, my work still has a fashion element to it and um, you have the same visual universe you are working with you can you can find amazing locations you can work with set designers you can work with stylists that's totally fine i think the main difference is how you are directing your subject when uh, you are doing a fashion editorial you have total creative freedom it's your vision and you are the director of the shoot you can do the casting and then you direct your models you, you tell them how to pose what the characters they are pulling and um, you basically have total control while when you're working with a celebrity, a musician or a dancer, obviously you still place them into your little visual world, but I think the main difference is how you direct them. Basically, you don't direct them, you, are, you observe and you have to bring out their real personality, you have to channel their real character. And honestly, lately, I find this more and more interesting. So this is what I like doing more and more. I got the chance to work with musicians such as Zara Larson, Tom Walker, Sean Lennon, or bands like Sundara Karma, Eagles of Death Metal, The Horrors, or um, I love working with punk musicians, so some of the bands I photographed are Fat White Family, Emin and the Sniffers, or Surfboard. 
I photographed the Ukrainian ballet dancer Sergei Polony in 2017 when I got commissioned by a Russian magazine called SNC. I had no idea who he was. I googled him, I realized he's quite famous, and I did my little research prior to shoot. He became the youngest principal in the Royal Ballet's history at age of 19, then shocked the establishment by suddenly departing in 2012, being labeled the bad boy of ballet for his exploits and he got tattooed all over and I didn't know what to expect but I was very excited because I thought if if I'm shooting a ballet dancer it has to be the bad boy. <laughs> Even when I was working with a stylist I wanted to uh, pull very classical pieces as well, but also mix it with rock and roll elements, some nice scarves, some nice jackets, to have that sort of connotation to the images, to highlight his bad boyness. And honestly, I was very nervous, what if he never shows up? But um, surprisingly, he ran only one hour late, and he was one of the politest, loveliest, most humble artists I ever worked with. Another commission that sort of stands out for me was when I when I had to take pictures of this band Eagles of Death Metal in California a few years ago for the, for the LA-based magazine called Foxes. I got five minutes to photograph the band backstage um, at a festival, and I was a bit nervous because obviously five minutes is is nothing. So I started taking pictures of the band and then I started taking solo portraits of the of the singer Jesse Hughes and he was talking to me, we were having a nice conversation and at some point he goes, do you want to see my gun? So obviously it has it has different connotations as well but I went, sure, why not? So he went back to his room and came back with, with an actual gun that he started loading in front of my camera and he started telling me about his experiences, about how he felt at the terror attack um, at their concert at the Bataclan in Paris in 2015. And you know, regardless politics, I still think those pictures or those portraits are some of my strongest images. Sometimes I get asked I'd like to photograph the most, what's my dream shoot scenario is and I can't really decide whether I'd like to photograph the most Nick Cave or Patti Smith so I'm gonna say both of them the high priest and the high priestess of rock and roll now some words about some of the personal projects uh, I've done I mentioned earlier I'm coming from a finite conceptual photography background so I'm still working on personal projects um, up until today. Let's start with the one called Lovers. It's really important to me because this was my final master project at university and it got a pretty big publicity. Uh, I was photographing couples, real couples, in their intimate environment. I tried to capture raw, real moments and I was taking pictures of people who I actually knew because I wanted to show an aspect of our contemporary youth culture in a more honest way. I took pictures of my lesbian, my gay and my, my heterosexual friends. I wanted to explore the nature of sexual fluidity and show the similarity between the different um, relationships. Basically my aim was to celebrate love regardless gender. Another personal project that is really important to me is actually a project by my father and I. As I mentioned earlier, my father is a photographer. He used to be a photojournalist in the 70s socialist Hungary behind the Iron Curtain. And in recent years, he started rediscovering his archive and he found some images that he took during his nights out. Basically, he was photographing in 70s socialist Hungary, Hungary's nightlife. And it's especially interesting because uh, every time when I go out in London I have a 35mm camera in my hands and I just 
take random portraits of random people, sometimes of strangers, sometimes of my friends. So basically, I just document my nights out. And it became especially interesting when my father and I, we started putting our pictures next to each other. And sometimes you couldn't even tell them apart. Obviously, there were some hidden details like a laptop or a smartphone on my images or the portrait of Lenin hanging behind a DJ on my father's pictures. We felt this tells and shows something very timeless and universal about youth. Because the drive of the youth was always the same and will be always the same. Just forgetting about reality, work, everyday struggles for some stolen hours and just having fun, dancing, drinking, kissing, falling in love, regardless any political regime. And the third personal project I'd like to say a few words about is self-portraiture. As I said at the very beginning of this video, I started a whole photography, my whole photography with taking self-portraits. And I was recreating famous paintings of Da Vinci, the Pre-Raphaelites like Rossetti or Allori. So basically I was recreating famous paintings of iconic women and uh, obviously I'm not necessarily proud of those pictures anymore but still I learned a lot about photography through that process. When I started working professionally more and more uh, I had less and less time for my personal projects so I basically stopped taking pictures of myself. Now when lockdown happened, which was obviously a very difficult time for all of us, photographers, creatives as well, Still, it allowed me to start working on some of my personal projects again. So I went back to taking self-portraits because lockdown was a time for self-reflection anyhow. Even I created a video for Canon, Canon Europe, um, about how to stay creative and inventive at home now that we had all this newly found free time on our hands. Also, I gave some tips on taking self-portraits as well. And I started taking pictures, I started creating collages, I started using fragments of text. So basically, I ended up creating almost a photo book of self-portraits and texts and a dream journal mixed together. It became very much like an art therapy for me. It's a reflection on postmodern love. And now I want to share some tips and insights with you, um, some details of the process of how I actually work. You know, I don't really like the word control freak, but I do like taking control over the whole process of a photo shoot. From the very for first moment on, like putting a mood board together, uh, through the actual, actual shoot itself, till the very final end result, the post-production. So, when it comes to organizing the shoot, finding the perfect location, doing the casting, or finding your perfect team members, I like I like doing it. Obviously, when it's a big production, there's a producer. Sometimes you have to let the control out of your hands a little bit. How I always start working is putting a mood board together. It always starts in your mind. So I always have a vision, a mood, a story in my mind I try to capture. The mood board helps you communicating towards your team. It helps your team, the hairstylist, the makeup artist, the stylist, the set designer, the model, understand what the mood you want to capture, what the mood you want to achieve. Obviously, it's a great starting point, but you'll have to be open to let it develop in unexpected ways. I always preferred shooting on location with natural light. Probably first it came from an insecurity. At the beginning I didn't really uh, know how to use studio lighting. Obviously throughout the years I've gained more and more experience, so I've honed my studio lighting skills. And I had to realize lighting is not that difficult after all. Obviously shooting in studio can be exciting as well, you can be playing with the lights. But still, up until today, I prefer using natural light to have sort of an artistic painterly edge to it. Sometimes I also like mixing natural light with a little pointy artificial light. It can be very DIY as well. It can be a little LED torch light or a flash. 
I also love shooting on location and having an exciting backdrop because I believe it helps you delivering a more impactful and exciting imagery. Sometimes when I have a photo shoot, I start doing a little video as well, a little fashion film or mood video. And it's always good to have some footage for a teaser of a few seconds. And also because sometimes there are scenarios when film is just a better fit. Even though I consider myself more as a photographer, we have these amazing cameras here, uh, these amazingly versatile DSLR cameras or now, for example, the Canon's R series. The little mirrorless cameras are just amazingly good film cameras as well. So now we can deliver both. And it's a good selling point as well. Most likely you're gonna get the job if you can do both, if you can deliver images and the little teaser video at the end. So a little bit about posing and directing a model. As I said earlier, I think finding the perfect model and interesting character is the most important element of a shoot. You can have the most beautiful clothes, the best location, but if the model and you and the mod model and the photographer don't inspire each other, then the result is just not going to be the same. It's always a great starting point to use a mood board and already existing images as a reference for poses but obviously the shoot depends on the model's personality too and the chemistry between the photographer and the model and when you start shooting it basically evolves naturally from there so it's always exciting to see what the model and the photographer brings out of each other and how they inspire each other I always like a friendly atmosphere on set to make everyone feel comfortable, to make the model feel comfortable and always, we always chat, get to know one another, we listen to loud music and even though a shoot is obviously hard work, you know, it's still fun, you have to have fun because it's just going to give a better result at the end. In today's industry, being present on social media is essential. Social media is your main online portfolio now. It's just the best way for networking, finding new team members, finding magazines you want to work with, or finding models, or even for clients to find you. Today, you have to be your own agent. Even if you have an agent, you still need to network by being active on social media, sending out emails every day, introducing yourself, every single day yourself and your work to producers to magazines basically you just have to be authentic enthusiastic about what you are doing and people will respond to that just as a as an advice because this is something i've done wrong in the past i want to highlight the importance of backing up it happened to me twice that i lost data i lost files and photographs of two really important shoots because my hard drive broke so I just don't want anyone else to, to do the same mistakes but please back up everything twice at least so now that we are getting to the end of our little session here today I was just thinking how to sum it all up and I just remember this journalist guy who asked me this, uh, this question the other day so Wanda what motivates you to get up every morning to shoot so I was thinking for a second, but then I had to realize I work every day, even, even when I don't even go close to my camera, when I don't even touch my camera, because everywhere I go, everyone I see, everyone I meet, everything I see inspire me in a way. All the books we are reading, all the movies we are watching, all the music we are listening to, all the people, all the strangers we are meeting on the streets, all the cats and dogs we are stroking, basically everything is inspiring and um, 
I think it's just very beautiful and exciting. Canon has this quote, live for the story. And I just realized that in my reading it, it means um, living itself, life is inspiring. And uh, basically there's a new story to tell. There's a new story to photograph wherever we go, literally every corner. We just have to let all the inspiring things turn into images. So thank you for watching my video. Feel free to ask me questions in the live Q&A and take care.